Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for May 25th, 2018. This is episode 67. And today we're going to be talking about SMS triggers in Microsoft Flow. Now, just as a reminder, while I am an employee of Microsoft, the opinions expressed in this video are my own. And in today's episode, I want to talk about two things. Number one is PowerShell. So a couple weeks ago, I had released a video. It was part one around security and governance and administration for Microsoft Flow. And I had a sneak peek at the end of that video related to PowerShell and some of the PowerShell investments that we've been making. Well, I've been um, holding off on the second episode because I wanted to ensure that we shipped and our commandlets were readily available and in public. And what you will see as of the 25th is that we have an updated or refreshed list of PowerShell commandlets that are available. And now that those are public, I will go ahead and record an episode, perhaps the next one or, or shortly thereafter, um, describing them in more detail. But I did want to give an update for those of you that might be wondering what is the status of those. Now, the core content today, we're going to talk about SMS triggers with Microsoft Flow and a third-party connector called InfoBip. Now, in the last episode that I recorded, I used the InfoBip connector to go ahead and pass text to it, and it would actually go ahead and call someone on their phone and actually read that text aloud to them. So today we're going to use a bit of a different approach, and we're going to actually have the ability to receive SMS messages inside of Microsoft Flow and go ahead and trigger a flow. Uh, so this is something I haven't seen before, and I was pretty excited about it when I saw it, so I thought I had to go... I would, so I thought I would go ahead and record this this video for you. Now this is, uh, as I said, when I first saw this, my mind was blown. Hopefully you'll feel the same way um, after going through this content. And I was trying to think of scenarios where this would make sense. And the one that came to mind immediately was radio stations and their on-air contests that they have, which usually involve people going ahead and texting in a keyword and um, whether it's like some phrase or they have to answer a question. And then what will happen is the radio station will then either select, like, say, the 10th specific person who's texted or have a random draw. And I figured, like, this would be a good scenario to manage with, with, with Microsoft Flow and eliminate or reduce a lot of the manual steps in trying to deal with these types of contests. So let's go ahead. Let's get right into the demo. And then I'll show you what's up. So a little background here. So I've got a SharePoint list where I'm going to store all of the different contestants that go ahead and text in their their numbers. And what we'll do is, you know, you leave this open for a period of time. And once it's done, then we'll have a subsequent flow that will go ahead and choose the winner at random. So let's first off talk about what does it take to actually go ahead and receive these text messages into Microsoft Flow. So what we want to do is add the InfoBip connector. We have to provide a phone number, which is part of your registration with that connector. And then also a keyword, which in this case I'm using, and it's called, and it's win. So if someone goes ahead and types in win in a SMS message, sends it to that number, this flow is actually going to light up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the results. Now this is considered an array, but um, from my experience, we just see a single record that comes in. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is going to go ahead and create an item in that SharePoint list, including the, uh, in this case, the title, which is the default field. And we're, this is going to be the clean text. So this is going to be the body of the message itself. And in this case, we're asking contestants to provide their name. The other, uh, the next field that we need to capture is sender. So this would be the actual SMS number that the message was sent from. I'm going to capture a UTC now, a timestamp, and I'm going to pre-populate the columns with is winner no, is contacted no, and we'll talk about the winning confirmation here shortly. So now here I'm in my mobile phone. I'm going to go ahead and type in win, and in this case I will provide the name of a very famous football player and we'll go ahead and click send. So that's now been sent. And as we can see, our flow has been executed successfully and an item has been created. So let's head over to SharePoint. Sure enough, sure enough, there is our record, Barry Sanders. 
So that's the first part. We'll have many contestants that go ahead and submit their entries through this way and they land up in SharePoint. Once we're, we've closed down the campaign, we want to declare a contest winner. So let's go ahead and let's just take a quick look at this flow. And in this case, it's going to get triggered from a button. Um, we're going to want to initialize a winning code so that we're, when we find the winner, we're going to send them a text message and ask them to call or get in touch with the radio station. And in order to validate them, we will provide a winning code. To do this, we're going to use uh, just a substring of a GUID and we're going to take the first six characters of a GUID, um, which will be random enough for our situation here. Next up, we're going to go ahead and get all of the items for this SharePoint list. And then what we're going to do is we want to be able to randomly choose one of them. So in order to do that, we need to understand how many contestants there are. So we're going to go ahead and use this expression and we're going to get the length of the get items value array. So this is going to be all of the, the nodes essentially returned back from that list. And we also want to do a subtraction because when we go ahead and, and determine the index of the, um, the, the randomly selected winner, uh, it's going to be zero based. So we're going to subtract one off of this number. Next, what we'll do is we will determine what the random number is. So in this case, we're going to do random between zero and our number of contestants. We'll go ahead and we're going to get that specific item from SharePoint. And I didn't want to go through a loop, so I'm just going to go ahead and use an, an index. And this is the index of our random selected number and we're going to get the ID and we're going to pass that ID into the get item call and then we can go ahead and use the response from the get item to supplement some other actions. Number one we're going to use it to actually send the winner a text. We'll provide them with the winning code and then we're going to go ahead and update the item with the the title just because it's a mandatory field but we're going to populate is a winner yes and is contacted yes in addition to the winning code so let's go ahead and run this specific flow and since we have the mobile app up let's just run it from there so radio station declare contest winner we'll go ahead and click the button we'll see this has run and we can also see the winner has been selected. Now to keep things simple, all of these entries come to my phone number, but we can see that yes, I've won this contest and here's the winning code that I need to present to the radio station itself. Now let's see who was the lucky winner. Let's head back over here. Let's refresh and we can see that it was John Levesque that actually won. So no, John, you didn't actually win, but uh, thanks for uh, being a good sport and playing the game here. So I hope that gave you a good example of how you can actually use the SMS trigger. And I can think that there's probably tons of other use cases where you want to support SMS messaging. Maybe it's around customer service. Um, I've showed before demos of the intelligent customer service scenario where you're pulling in emails and you using Lewis to detect intent and then responding in an intelligent fashion. You could certainly use similar use cases around SMS messaging as well, where you could expose that and then use some sort of cognitive service and layer it on top of it in order to respond to those requests. So hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can use this technology. But uh, that concludes this episode of Middleware Friday. We'll catch you soon. Uh, Steph Jan will be up next week uh, with myself the week after. Likely we'll do something around Integrate as that is a conference that's coming up and looking forward to speaking there again. But until next time, take care and want to thank BizTalk360 for being a, a great partner of the show. And we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday. Yeah.